Hello and welcome back to another video of uh, Techno Premium. This time we're gonna be talking about Docker for 2020. I think Docker is one of the most growing uh, tool it being utilized by developers and also for IT the departments. Uh, it's meant to be for development, testing and deploying applications on an easy way and also for scale. You can use uh, tools like Kubernetes for example if you want to orchestrate different Docker containers. But in this video we're gonna be talking, we're gonna be focused on why Docker, what is Docker, what's the compar and the comparison between Docker and virtual machines because in the past how the industry works is you create a virtual machine to deploy your applications on multiple cluster uh, computers and then now this uh, is being replaced by docker uh, containers okay so the main topic here with today will be docker containers of course uh, we're gonna explain what is docker difference between docker and a vm or the difference between those two and at the end we're going to have a demo a comparison where we're going to launch a docker container and also we're going to be launching a vm so you can see the difference between one and the other so what's docker docker is a set of platform as a service product that use os level virtualization to deliver software in packages called containers Containers are isolated from one another and bundle their own software, libraries, and configuration files. They can communicate with each other through well-defined channels. All containers run by a single operating system kernel and are thus more lightweight than virtual machines. So it's a lot of words. You can find that on the Wikipedia. So in an easy word, we got to hear the structure. People are more visual that you read. You can read a lot of things and at the end, uh, it may make it difficult for you to realize what's happening. But if once you see something, so it's better always uh, to show in a visual way. So on the left side, we have the usual um, virtual machine one we have for developing applications. So the first thing, uh, you have a project in your mind and you're gonna start working with infrastructure. So you need to think how much uh, memory RAM you need, what kind of um, uh, Linux distribution if you wanna deploy on Linux, you need for it. And then you need to go with the host operating system, which is gonna be, we can be ESXi or different ones, like for example, for uh, VMware. And then on top of that, you have the hypervisor. So the hypervisor is the layer when you can install the different operating system. It can be Windows, it can be Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, different distributions, right? So you get the uh, guest OS, and on top of that is when you're gonna start uh, installing your application. It's gonna be all the libraries and dependency for your application and the application itself. Every time you want to scale, or let's say you have your department of uh, development and then you have another department for testing. And at the end, once you run all this commit, um, you send the application to deployment. In that case, you need to have different virtual machines uh, running and utilizing more power than actually they need because maybe your application is using, let's say, two gigs of RAM and um, one or two cores, but your creative, your creative virtual machine with four uh, cores a more memory RAM because at the beginning you don't know how much you're gonna be needing right and this remember this VM is gonna be running uh, need to be running 24 7 they need to be up and all the time they will not uh, decrease or increase depend on demand they're gonna be running all the time so on top of the operating system once you build your libraries then you build your application that's the normal virtual machine on the right on the left side now if you move to the right side you're gonna notice something really uh, important here and is that um, this layer of guest OS which is gonna be Ubuntu or CentOS or different ones we just removed that layer and then the container came in the container demo which is gonna communicate directly with the kernel install of the operating system it doesn't matter what operating system you are the only thing you need to have installed is docker and once you pack your application with all the dependency and you export that as a docker file or, or has a docker container you can deploy that in any infrastructure it can be any in any you can deploy that in any distribution it could be ubuntu centos it doesn't matter because it will utilize the kernel of that machine so as you can see here we got the infrastructure the host operating system we can always need to have that then the container demo which is going to be running docker and on top of that we can deploy your application also it will be pretty fast for you just to run these applications and scale using kubernetes you just create a cluster and then deploy the application on those uh, cluster the good thing here is that it will utilize the memory as needed per uh, for the application so it will contract or expand depend of uh, how many people are using that app so the main key features of docker is boot time is the first one execution when you execute uh, your application for deployment 
uh, for production, the isolation, because in this case um, it is like a package isolated, completely isolated from the operating system. You're just running the application with uh, the dependency that uh, this need uh, this app need to be run it. Then we have the deployment, the the stages, which is development, testing, and deploy. You can use this container to do uh, each of these three phases without having any VMs running on it, just deploying the, the container. And it's pretty simple to go back to a different version of the app, which is the, if the new one is not working or uh, upgrade with new features to the latest one. And of course, uh, hardware is better utilized by Docker, like for example, GPU utilization, like we call, that's what we call pass through on VPN on VMs. VMs you can see here, um, if you have you seen in the past, it's, pretty, uh, it's a little bit complicated to get GPU pass through on NVIDIA. Uh, GPU um, and we see these days more and more utilizing GPUs for compute power or different kind of uh, even 3 rendering now and uh, Even 3 rendering or video editing that using the the GPUs But we're gonna be focused on compute power and of course using docker if we just one common You can select how many video cards you need if you have in the system Or you can just for example launch a container with one GPU and another container with another GPU on the system without dealing with all this complicated uh, these complicated things doing the pass through on the VMs. Okay, with that said, I would like to uh, jump to a demo. This demonstration here is going to be how we can launch in, it's going to be the different performance on having a docking container and have a virtual machine. We're going to see uh, the boot option, how one start and the other one. We're also going to see a few, just uh, an overview of a TensorFlow running on a Docker container, which is going to be pretty simple to give you an idea how fast you can deploy. Uh, TensorFlow on the Docker container and start training a model, and what are the problems if you have to do it in the virtual machine, in the, on the virtual machine, and and of course at the end we're gonna see also the GPU utilization, how you can launch Docker and utilize the GPU, and how complicated it can be for virtual machines to actually get the pass through with the GPU. Okay, without further ado, let's move on to the demo. So first, we're gonna launch a VM, which we already we have already set up with everything, with all the dependency and all the frameworks we already work. And we're gonna see how long it takes for that uh, VM to launch. Okay, so we're gonna start. like a normal machine and even though these VMs start faster than a machine um, you see it takes a while to to boot up into the operating system okay now we are inside the operating system it was really fast but we're gonna see now how, uh, the difference running a docker and also keep in mind that once you run into the VM you should have everything set up to automatically start the application your application uh, so customer can have access to it so you need to create bash scripting and different chrome tabs in order to auto start your application on the background so something else uh, something else I need to be set up okay so now you know we're gonna launch a docker container and see how long it's gonna take okay we open terminal and we tap to launch the container put a password and in less than five seconds we are now inside the container and the container is tensorflow uh, so what it does actually launch the container imagine like a virtual machine so you now you have access to memory ram cpu uh, Memory RAM, CPU, GPU, everything inside, and on top of that, you launch with all the dependencies ready for to launch TensorFlow. If, for example, you type NVIDIA SMI now, you see that uh, we are actually have access to the GPU. When you launch uh, the VM, some of them can have access to GPUs, others you need to do a GPU pass through, and that takes a lot of time. Uh, doing containers is much uh, is easier, and it will launch automatically. You see that it took less than five seconds. Okay, now we're gonna see uh, how we're gonna. So now we are inside the container, we can see all the files inside. And if we want to just close the container, it's just simple as Ctrl PQ, that's it. We are outside the container already. If we need to do that on the VM, you need to go there or schedule uh, a shutdown, and it will take around five seconds to shut down the machine. And then should uh, put it back on again, it takes more time. Okay. Now we're gonna do a test. Uh, for example, let's say, 
So let's say that you need uh, launch TensorFlow, for example. On the virtual machine, the first thing you need to do, of course, create a virtual machine. Once you are inside, and uh, as you can see here, we have the same uh, GPU and same performance. So we had two cores on this VM, uh, four cores, and then we have uh, up to 15 gigs of RAM. Now, if we want, for example, to run TensorFlow, we need to install a lot of things. Believe me, it's a Python. We need to install Python 3. Um, we need to go to TensorFlow website, uh, do all the dependencies. On top of that, we have to install CUDA. Then we have to go to, we need to install Nico, NCCL, CUDDN, all the things to make TensorFlow work. And actually, once you make it work, it may have some problems. And if you want to upgrade to a different version of TensorFlow, maybe the dependencies that you installed before that are not working, and then the operating system is gonna be a mess. Uh, you can work with environments, but it's not the way to go. The best way to go here is using NGC containers. And uh, I'm going to show you in a second. For example, if I type, I try to open a TensorFlow application. First, we're going to go to Python 3. And to check if we have TensorFlow, we can just type import TensorFlow as TF. And as you can see here, we have TensorFlow inside. So if we want to run, if we want to run a benchmark, we can just download the files and then run the benchmark right now. So in this machine, as you can see, we have TensorFlow and everything set up, but you have to build everything by yourself. It can take a couple of days if you have experience building uh, this kind of uh, dependencies, but it can take even more. Okay, so now let's see how we can launch TensorFlow on the container once you have so the first thing you have need to have is of course I have NVIDIA NGC containers and having the images inside you see here where you can have as many images as you need for, for instance uh, right now I have um, TensorFlow different versions I can install even more or delete them or I can install different one like for example PyTorch, Theano, Cafe different ones and once I have the image on Docker containers I can just launch the Docker container and that's it Another alternative, um, once you launch a Docker container, of course, remember it's gonna be on the no user interface, so you will have uh, the command line. But if you want to have a user interface in a web way, you can always use Jupyter Notebooks. And using uh, Jupyter Notebooks will give you um, like a UI where you can upload your files to do whatever you want. And the last part here is talking about the hardware. Uh, for example, on a Docker container, you can uh, select the hardware on a simple way. So, for let me open a, so let me open a different one, a simple one here. So, when you launch a container, you set up a different command. So, for example, sudo uh, NVIDIA Docker is going to launch an NVIDIA Docker container. Then it's gonna run, and this is the important part here. You can select NVIDIA visible devices. So for example, on this virtual machine we have, on this computer, we have just one video card. And we can select if we want to use uh, that video card. But if you have the, the cool stuff is when you have four or five or six video card. Let's say, for example, you want to use uh, two video card, you select zero and one and then on inside the docker container for like a virtual machine in a container you will have two video cards if you want to do this on a house machine let's say you have four gpus and then you have you want to have four vms each of them with one gpu you need to go with gpu pass through and in order to do this it's a lot of proprietary software uh, doing with vmware that is not actually not working properly and when a docker container is just launched the same way you launch a docker container the only difference is that you're going to select how many gpus you want to use this is a great uh, feature let's say for developers that you buy a machine for example for your lab and that machine has four gpus and then you have four developers well, uh, each of them will connect to that host machine through ssh for example and then launch this common each of them Developer number one will launch it like this. Developer number two will launch it like this, three, and so on. So each developer will utilize just one GPU on that machine. Once they finish, they can just, uh, once they finish, let's say, developing and want to train for overnight, they can just select all the GPUs on that machine again, and it will run uh, the model on the four GPU. 
pretty simple process with just one comma you can select what uh, hardware you can utilize on that computer this is a huge step forward on, the, um, on on compute development because before doing this with vms vms are very optimized for GPU or cpu and clusterization with cpu when it comes but when it comes to gpu there's not that much advantage of it so using docker container is a huge it's a huge advantage doing this you can find more information about uh, what we do in technopremium.com. We have the first uh, UI deep learning benchmark where you can download from our website. And once you have that, you can run it on a user interface. So you don't need to know anything about command line. And then you can upload your results to a chart of fame. So you can see here different benchmark we're using and different GPUs. So for example, four GPUs, three GPUs, two and one. So you can see how your score is performing with others and also find out what's the video card that we're using and the, the consumption of the video card. So it's pretty good to have that information here. If you want to know more about the uh, Docker containers or different uh, software application focus on deep learning, you can also check our blog. Okay. So let me know in the comments below what you think about Docker containers and keep tuned for more videos like this. I see you on the next one. Bye bye.